have with us Nick Del Santo at the desk. Uh, welcome, Nick. Thanks for having me. Um, the I Love Lenny campaign has been large. Yeah, I've noticed that. Has it, <laughs> has it made you sick at all? <laughs> well, no, not really. I think Lenny deserves every little bit of credit that he gets, Robbo. Um, obviously being a part of his career for 12 years, you can understand why people do love him, not only internally as a player, um, but externally for the way he goes about his footy, the sort of bloke that he is. Um, it's been pretty large, though, the amount of love for him. Um, you know I... what, Jeanette, can you understand why, as a teammate, can you understand why followers of other teams love him? In some ways. I mean, I understand that opposition supporters respect people the way they go about their footy. And I think Lenny encapsulates everything that you want in a football. He's hard, he's um, selfless. Mm. I think that he's a real team sort of person. I reckon people outside can see that in him. But I also reckon they respect the sort of bloke that he is. And you talk about fanfare and modesty, and I think Lenny would hate... Yeah. In some ways, the amount of publicity that he's getting, and in some ways, bad luck. That's what you deserve. So <laughs> I enjoy that sort of part of it, but he's been as good a teammate as I've had over a 13 year career. And yeah. when you've heard that Luke Ball is finishing up as well, what were you Yeah, I only found there? out that about five o'clock tonight. Obviously, there's been a bit of talk about it. Um, that's sad as well. I mean, obviously, I've known Luke and actually got to stay with his family when we were under 17s, moved to, uh, I was from Bendigo, stayed with his family as a, uh, as a kid, and sort of grown up with Luke as well. So really sad times. But the thing that I did like, and I heard you talk about it before, Robert, that he's at peace. And I reckon him and Lenny have the right to feel like that just because of the mm. way they've gone about their football. That I reckon if you said to them at the start of their career, in 12, 13, 15 years' time, you're going to walk away from the game satisfied, then what more can you really ask for? Now, don't take this personal, but when you are at St Kilda <laughs> and you had Luke Ball and Lenny Hayes yeah. beside you, yeah. you were thinking to yourself, I <laughs> really don't have to dive in and get that ball. <laughs> well, I might just go over here. It's almost the opposite, to be honest with you. You knew if they were doing it and they were prepared to do it week after week that you had to do it. They set yeah, the standard. Yeah. Um, I understand what you're saying. I but everyone's got different skills, yeah, right? I, and your skills was to, to run and deliver. The amount of, I mean, you look at the amount of times they had bandages on their heads and that just mm. sort of showed the sort of person they were and what they were prepared to do for the team. And unfortunately, <laughs> they did it every week. Does it make you feel old when you, when you see contemporaries go? Oh, yes and no. How old are you anyway, by the way? 30. We don't have to go too deeply in that, Robbo. <laughs> I still feel pretty decent. My body's feeling nice. Um, but it is. You just start to look around the change rooms and it happened at St Kilda last year and it's happening mm -hmm. this year and you start to realise there's not many older than you. You know, the kids know these words and these songs and, you know, it's all about being on your phone. And that's, You were that's like that when you were 19. We didn't have it, you mate. Did we would have so. gotten a lot of trouble if we were kids doing that sort of stuff, but you start to feel old every now and then with a few things that's, uh, that's going on these days. How, how, how much did you think, do you think, uh, we're coming into the finals and well done for, for, to North Melbourne. It's been, a, it's been a really interesting year watching North Melbourne. Yeah, there's been highs and lows again, but it's coming pretty well at the, at the right time of the year. How much it, has it reinvigorated, not your career, your mind and, 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 your, and your association with footy? Yeah, I reckon you've hit the nail on the head. I reckon it's more your mind. It's not that I train any differently than I have probably mm. the last 10 or so years. I just reckon you have to be more alert. And it's everything from making sure you're not late, making sure you understand training sessions, making sure you understand the, the way that the team plays. And it wasn't until I left that I realised that I actually knew the St Kilda players naturally really well. You know when Lenny Hayes gets the ball, where he's going to turn. And I reckon it took me a little while just to sort of understand how, you know, Daniel Wells plays when he gets the ball or Jack Zeeble, because they are a little bit different. Um, when Lindsay gets the ball, just run back to the centre. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's just going to have a he's shot not, And he's not going to handball it to you, you so don't have to worry about that. But um, I reckon more than anything, it's just made you more alert. You just have to be on your toes. What about building respect? You're talking about being late. You wouldn't have yeah. been late for a second at a new club, yeah. would you? No, I tried never to be late at the same I'm, time. I'm sure, I'm sure of that. But did that sort of... All those little things get just like a, a little jolt. Magnified, yeah. yeah. And I reckon the other thing is you don't want to be caught out with it and you want to set good standards and... Yep. Um, I felt like I'd done that at St Kilda over a period of time, but going to a new club, you also that was your first opportunity to give them the impression of what yeah. you are as a person and the way you go about your footy off the field as well, which they wouldn't have known about prior to getting there. So I've actually really enjoyed that side of it as well and the, the challenge of not necessarily knowing what you're going to do every day because the program's different. A team who is locked into a position has an obligation to set themselves for the first week of the finals, and North Melbourne has done that. There are RDOs, obviously, in the offing. Yep. Uh, do you, did you want to play through? Do you like the continuity of it? This time of year, absolutely. I reckon there's opportunities throughout the year, and maybe going forward, that I wouldn't mind a week off, just where your body's at and mentally just freshen up. I think the two-by season is fantastic for that. Um, but for me at the moment, I actually enjoy the continuity of playing, recover, prepare, play. And I just felt if I was to have this weekend off, I would have been a little bit different for next week and I didn't want to run that risk. The, the, evolve, the evolving... 
I want to look at North Melbourne and, and, and all the players are a part of it, what, what you guys say in publicly. And you're on SGN and I asked you a question. You said, oh, yeah, did that get out? And you explained <laughs> it. You weren't comparing St Kilda's a, a spray from, um, from uh, Brad Scott to, to Ross Lyman. Different players have said something, led by probably Boomer. Yeah. Has, has the team evolved from the start of the year to now? Yeah. What has been the greatest change in character, I suppose? I reckon it's a little bit of just growing up as well and living through experiences. And I felt coming to the club at the start of this year that they'd be a different group than what they were last year, losing all those close yeah. games. I just felt you had to live some of those experiences to understand what to do in the heat of battle. And I reckon playing a final in two weeks' time, it's going to be the same again. It's a new experience and you need to understand and live those before you can know how to handle it. Um, I think the group as a whole has also developed in regards to the way that we speak to each other. Um, assert- more demanding. Oh, and more ass- assertive. You, assertive, sorry, I yeah, I think assertive there. is a good word. Um, more demanding and I'd say probably more consistently and more often. Um, so that's the next step. For a guy who didn't win a premiership at St Kilda but you got so close, are you seeing the same steps being put in place with the younger people that you and Montagna and, and Rewalt had to go through yeah. in taking those steps to get to the grand final? Are you seeing those steps being taken? I see a lot of similarities. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I think the group at North Melbourne are, you know, youngish, you know, 22. I think you forget that Zeebel and Cunnington and these guys, Bastinac, are actually quite young. Um, and I see a little bit of them in what we were like, what was it, probably mid-2000s now, going back a little while. Um, but that's what I sort of refer to. You need to live that as well. And I think they're fantastic players. They've got every capability of growing. When I'm gone, they'll still obviously be there. Um, but growing into something really um, sustained success. And I really like that. And I think that's exciting for the footy club. So just on a personal note, how much are you looking forward to getting back to finals footy? Yeah, a lot. And yeah. I think when you're not a part of it, you realise how special it is. And I'm really looking forward to the whole group being a part of September in Melbourne. They played a final a couple of years ago in West Coast and... Didn't go really well, but I think it's a different game and it's a different feel when you play in September in Melbourne. It's a little bit special. And, Do you uh, feel pressure? I'll be honest. I feel that, pressure every week. I know, but they brought you over and you wanted to come. <laughs> and you're trying, you're, to, you're trying to put a little bit more on me, eh? Well, I can't. There's a lot of pressure on you anyway. There's pressure yeah. on every player. But you come over, dollars, whatever, but you come over to help this group and now they're there. Do you feel so right? My, job, my job's done. No, it's not. It's just starting, <laughs> no, actually, Del. No, I don't feel any more pressure. Yeah. I actually appreciate and enjoy the responsibility of trying to pass on a little bit of something that I've been through in the past, but I'm hoping whenever that first game is the first final, it's still football, and that's the beauty of it. When you break it down to the most simplest form and mm. you look at Lenny Hayes and you look at... Um, I was thinking about Ryan O'Keefe. The reason he's been a fantastic player is he plays finals brand football every mm. week. That's just how he plays football, and that's why he's successful. I'd like to think there's still another game of footy. I know there's a little bit more at stake mm. and there'll be probably an extra 60,000 at the MCG and we play Essendon in a couple of weeks, but at its purest form, it's still footy. Enjoy it. We'll be watching. Nice to see you. Thanks, guys. Nick Del Santo with us.